harassed when you went to the polls. And uh, the parties uh, printed up the ballots for their candidates. And they and only the party's nominees were on the ballot. And so you were offered one or another, depending upon which uh, activists were present. But usually, they, sometimes the activists came to blows. Uh, and the polling places were not for the faint-hearted. This is what this was an argument against women's suffrage. We don't want women to be harassed. Uh, and so then they adopted the so-called Australian ballot in 1892, meaning the state government uh, prints the ballots with the names of all of the candidates on them. And I've just been reading about this uh, where in the newspapers where I guess it was in 1892, yeah. Uh, the newspaper commented the, the uh, party uh, people don't have anything to do. They, they sit around and, well, they help you, help me instruct you as to how to vote. Uh, but they were not supposed to you were not supposed to go into the polling place, but you could be right there on the door. <laughs> uh, and it's sometime later that they start telling uh, you that you cannot campaign within 100 feet or 200 feet, whatever, <laughs> of the polling place. So, very brief history of that. Uh, <clears throat> Don and I had experience with having a president visit <clears throat> excuse me, while we were in Lexington, Massachusetts for the bicentennial of, of the town? No, oh. the bicentennial oh, the, the, of the battle on April 19th. Oh. Okay. Which is a 200 year uh, commemoration. Mm -hmm. And they started with years worth of preparation for this. <coughs> and we're inviting the president to come. Mm -hmm. And the president did come. At the time that they needed to get the invitation uh, to Washington, several years ahead of time, Nixon was being impeached. So there was great debate about how to send it. And one wise official said, oh, send it to occupant. <laughs> who was in office at the time. But the chief mate, we take from his experience to the overkill in security. Uh, now, it was well known that President Ford was coming to this major event, uh, not just slipping into town from some local visit. So this uh, Secret Service was all over the place. And to our face, they had to weld down the manhole covers. They had security all over the place. Sharpshooters on the roofs of the buildings. They got into a major confrontation with the Lexington Minutemen over whether they could carry powder and discharge their muskets, which was a routine part of the thing. And the Secret Service was apoplectic about somebody firing a weapon near the president. Near the president. Uh, but, <laughs> oh, what other security thing? President Ford threw in, uh, flew into Hanscom Field, which is just on the edge of Lexington. And they closed down Route 128. So the amount of disruption <laughs> to the civilian population by having the president visit was good. But uh, I remember just a week, for a week or so ahead of time, you'd see these characters walking around the town, checking out everything, and they were all, you could spot them. They had some little 
device in their lapel, and they all looked alike. You could spot a Secret Service guy from 300 yards away, but uh, it was really extraordinary mm -hmm. security. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Sure. That's, that's, that's what is the, what's, what's the prices that we have paid in terms of the No, that wasn't a campaign. No, it was that particular event. Um, there is concern expressed about how the president cannot be uh, one of the people, cannot reach out to the people and be seen by the people. And I hinted at that in terms of the Roosevelt and Teddy Roosevelt and Bush contracts. Um, and there's a book on presidential travel that I read and, and was uh, uh, reliant upon as I worked through this um, uh, that is expresses the concern that uh, the president could be quite visible and could be uh, part of the public, uh, but now the the presidential bubble is such that it's very difficult for the uh, president. It's the, we're getting the the imperial presidency or the regal presidency uh, rather than a more democratic presidency, and uh, people had worried about that. And in terms of the founding fathers, the founding fathers intended the office to be. Uh, of course, somewhat above the, the, the common people, but uh, they were concerned about dictatorship. And so they hedged about the president with checks and balances and, and so on. Yes? Uh, I have questions, go but on. I'm not going to ask them. I'm going to just give a couple reminders. Um, some people maybe came prepared to buy one of Doug's new books because the ink has dried <laughs> and they're ready. February. It was printed in February. <laughs> and it's President's Day, officially, yes. yesterday. Yes. So it's very timely. And um, I know there's still more questions, but I want to thank His Excellency, the former <laughs> Whatever oh, we call right. you now. Has been. <laughs> Larry, because I know some people want to look at those pictures, so I just want to remind you of that because we can get wrapped up in questions and listening to wonderful answers, and we appreciate that. And also, there's the people who are first time visitors to our programs. I want to remind you that we do want to get your contact information if you'd like to get notices of upcoming things. Um, the man in the back, Jim Sargent with a checkered shirt, has paper. So if those of you who haven't given us your contact information would do that with him as you're moving around or listening to questions and answers. Those are my three big announcements. I'm sure there's more questions, but yeah, I do sure, want sure. us to thank Doug right yeah. now. You've been sitting long enough. You may ask questions. David, it's quite an entourage that day. I'm going to carry over to the cemetery. He's often a judicious Really? Yeah. Because of the Right here. Uh, you. 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 Uh, you.